Hello students, welcome to EPG Path Shala. I'm Dr. Manpreet Arora from Central University of Himachal Pradesh, Dharamshala. Today, we are going to discuss about a module, International Economic Institutions, WTO, under the paper International Business Operations. The learning outcomes of this module will be meaning of international economic institutions, main international economic institutions, GATT, WTO, working function, organization, role of WTO in world economy. Businesses have gone beyond their national boundaries and that's why the relevance of international business and the organizations or the institutions governing trade globally is constantly increasing. It's quite necessary to understand the meaning of international economic institutions and the international organizations which are dominating the world trade. WTO, properly known as World Trade Organization and its contribution towards the international business is very pertinent topic towards learning about international business. WTO is one of the three biggest international organizations that formulate and coordinate world economic policies. WTO places among the most significant role in promoting the free international trade. It is, in fact, an umbrella institution that cover the agreement made during the Uruguay round, which was the preparatory platform before launching of WTO. There are certain principal international economic institutions which act as a foundation and provide structural support to the world economy. There are various international institutions which not only provide funds to the developing nations but also assist them to achieve a level of development. Major important ones are IMF, which is called the Fund, World Bank, and the development banks like Asian Development Bank. The countries who have accepted to be the members of such international institutions are largely affected by the membership norms. Their economic policies and financial decisions are largely influenced by these economic international institutions. These international institutions provide funds to the member countries for several reasons and assist them timely. For example, IMF provides not only financial support but it also provides them technical assistance to the member countries. There are universally three principal international institutions which have assumed a greater and a larger role to play in the world economy. All three originated in wartime planning for better economic future. These are the International Monetary Fund, the International Bank for Reconstruction and Development, that's World Bank, and GATT, the General Agreement on Tariffs and Trade. Now, WTO, World Trade Organization. The WTO emerged out of the General Agreement on Tariffs and Trade in 1995. The key role of WTO is to act as a forum or a platform which negotiates on trading rules at international level. Moreover, it serves as a mechanism for dispute settlement on various trade issues. On the other hand, the World Bank and IMF help the developing countries during times of economic crisis or they deal with those countries which seek additional foreign resources. The membership of IMF is presently 188. The fund works in order to ensure stability of international monetary as well as financial system. The mandate of IMF states 
its objectives as promoting exchange rate stability, growth of international trade, as well as helping and assisting the member countries to solve and resolve the balance of payment position. Since its establishment, IMF is working as central institution of international monetary system with 29 countries as its members initially it started its financial operations in 1947 which was the result of Bretton Woods Conference of Nations held in 1944. The highest body of IMF is its board of governors. Each member country has to appoint a governor and an alternate governor. Day-to-day -day decision making is done by an executive board. This has 24 executive directors and a managing director as a chairman. The basic purpose of IMF is to promote, foster and encourage international cooperation by consultation as well as collaboration on international monetary issues. Its fundamental objective is to promote and expand international trade in the world economy. By contributing to boost international trade, it helps to encourage high levels of employment opportunities in the member countries. It takes steps to maintain orderly exchange arrangements among the member countries for promoting exchange rate stability. IMF also helps to eliminate all those foreign exchange restrictions in the international markets which hamper the international trade. The prime function of IMF is to lend to its member countries at the time of crisis. If the member countries suffer balance of payment problems, then IMF provides them loans so that they can restore to the equilibrium position and come out of the crisis for a balanced structural growth of their economy. The financial assistance of IMF is provided to the economies to rebuild their depleting international reserves at the time of the downfall. It also helps them to sustain out of the situations arising out of devalued currencies and contributes towards payments of the necessary imports. The loans are generally provided out of some arrangements which are the necessary stipulations or the conditions which a country must fulfill in order to get an access to the loan. The arrangement, if is pro approved by the executive body, the loan is disbursed in a phased manner. The financial assistance by IMF is tailored according to the need of the member countries. All those economies which are low-income economies can borrow at concessional rate of interests under the poverty reduction and growth facility. Other type of lending is done through various other schemes like standby arrangements, the extended fund facility, the supplement reserve facility and compensatory financing facility. World Bank also originated through Bretton Woods Conference. It is the world's biggest development funding institution. It originated in 1944 as a single institution, but now it has expanded to group of five development institutions, including the International Development Association, the International Finance Corporation, the Multilateral Guarantee Agency, and the International Center for the Settlement of investment disputes. Originally, World Bank 
was created as a post-war facilitator for reconstruction. The role now has extended to eradicate poverty. Reconstruction still is an important activity performed by World Bank. Poverty reduction through an inclusive and sustainable globalization is the extended goal of World Bank and its affiliates. Recently, the World Bank has set two ambitious goals to push extreme poverty to number more 3% by 2030 and to promote shared prosperity and greater equity in the developing world. The World Bank plays a pivotal role in providing financial as well as technical assistance to the developing nations throughout the world. It's a unique institution supporting development worldwide along with aiming for reducing poverty in nations. The headquarters of World Bank is in Washington, D.C. It has around 120 offices worldwide. World Bank, through its financial assistance programs, provides support in the areas of education, health, public administration, infrastructure, sectoral development, agriculture, environmental and natural resource management. It helps the developing nations by providing low interest loans, zero to low interest credits and grants to such nations. Timely, it also support the developing nations by giving policy advices and technical assistance as well as know-how facilitation. It also contributes by providing capacity development in those nations where they serve. The World Bank works like a cooperative. Presently, there are 188 countries who have taken its membership. The Board of Governors is the ultimate policy-making body and plays a critical role in putting its missions into practice. The Governors are mostly the Ministers of Finance or Ministers of Development for the from the member nations. They meet once a year at the annual meetings of the Board of Governors of the World Bank Group and International Monetary Fund. There is a group of 25 executive directors who work on site at the bank and the powers of the governors are delegated to this group. The five largest shareholders appoint an executive director while other member countries are represented by elected executive directors. From GATT to WTO there was a strong desire in the economies to liberalize trade in the world economies. As a result, the General Agreement on Tariffs and Trade, GATT, was born in 1948. In the Bretton Woods Conference, the establishment of ITO, IMF and World Bank was recommended. ITO was never ratified by the members. In place of ITO, GATT was drawn as an interim agreement to fill the gap of ITO. Until the character of ITO was ratified, thus general agreement on tariffs and trade was a multilateral agreement between various nations to regulate international trade. According to its preamble, its purpose was the substantial reduction of the tariffs and other trade barriers and the elimination of preferences on a reciprocal and mutually advantageous basis. GATT was signed by 23 nations in Geneva on October 30, 1947. It came into force on January 1, 1948. This agreement lasted until the signature by 123 nations in Marrakesh on April 14, 1994 of the Uruguay Round Agreements, which established the World Trade Organization on January 1, 1995. The prime objective of GATT was to enlarge and expand the international trade 
by introducing the liberalized trade measure so as to encourage facilitate all round economic prosperity worldwide various conventions were implemented in the gat regime which was governed by international trade for decades the general agreement on tariffs and trade established a forum for negotiations on cutting tariffs that consequently took place during the decades through multilateral trade rounds moreover the international the initial negotiations resulted in an agreement which helped to establish a set of basic rules and disciplines that member countries were required to follow it also devised a forum for dispute resolution if countries deviated from the established rules the most important and enduring of these basic rules embodied in the gat 1947 are the fundamental principle of reciprocity and two non discrimination principles most favored nation treatment and national treatment gat held a total of 9 rounds in these rounds issues like reducing tariffs anti dumping measures non tariff barriers plurilateral agreements were the major issues which were deliberated upon in all these rounds the most ambitious of these rounds was uruguay round in this round its members agreed on the fact that there is a strong need to adopt global challenging patterns regulating foreign trade in the world economy in relation to this various problems which were identified in 1982 ministerial deliberations the 8th gat round which is famously known as uruguay round was launched in september 1986 in punta del este uruguay it is stated that it was the biggest negotiating mandate on trade ever agreed the final act which concluded concluding the uruguay round and officially establishing the wto regime was signed on 15th april 1994 during the ministerial meeting at marrakesh morocco and hence it is known as the marrakesh agreement world trade organization in world economy there was a strong need for a full proof and a sound international body to support and promote the international trade wto has contributed immensely towards the end of achieving these goals if there is a free international trade it can help the economies enabling them to achieve high growth rate improving living standard reducing poverty removing trade barriers with 161 members since 26th april 2015 The World Trade Organization is an international institution which primarily deals with the rules of trade between the nations. Russia became its member in August 2012 and since then almost all the major trading economies are now the part of WTO. The WTO came into existence in 1995 succeeding the General Agreement on Tariffs and Trade. The WTO works to help international trade flow smoothly, predictably and freely and it provides the countries with a constructive and a fair outlet for dealing with disputes over the trade issues. The main functions of WTO are following. Its main function is administering WTO trade agreements. It is a forum for trade negotiations in the world economy. Handling this trade disputes between member countries is one of its main activities it helps in monitoring national trade policies it provides technical assistance and training for developing countries it provides cooperation to other international organizations for promoting world trade all the wto agreements are based upon achieving three main objectives first is to promote health and encourage trade flow at international level as freely as possible the second one is to attain high level of liberalization on global forefront in international trade through negotiations between major economies the third one is to devise a system 
or a dispute settlement body which works on transparent and impartial means promoting international trade. The agreements under WTO are based upon some fundamental principles which are non-discrimination, that is, the most favoured nation treatment, encouraging healthy competition among economies, leading to free trade as well as sound and foolproof predictable policies, special and favoured treatment by providing more provisions for less developed countries. Organization of WTO All the decisions under WTO are taken by consensus by the member countries. The agreements are ratified in members' parliaments. Ministerial Conference is the highest level decision-making body of WTO. This body meets once in two years. Under this ministerial conference, there is a general council which generally meets at Geneva many times a year. The General Council constitutes normally ambassadors and heads of delegation. This council also acts as a trade policy review body as well as a dispute settlement body. At the next level, there are some other councils which report to the General Council. These include Goods Council, Services Council, Intellectual Property Council. Let us discuss some notable points which should be remembered in regard to WTO. The WTO is as a result of negotiations and everything the WTO does is the result of negotiations. The majority of WTO's existing workforce comes from the 1986 to 1994 negotiations called as Uruguay Round. The WTO is a rule-based, member-driven organization. All the decisions are made by member governments and the rules are the outcome of negotiations among members. WTO is a body which has helped the countries facing trade barriers to lower the said barriers and through negotiations they have got an access to the open markets. Under Doha Development Agenda, which was launched in 2001, it would host series of new negotiations further in future. WTO also helps to protect the consumers by supporting maintenance of trade barriers, also deciding upon circumstances. WTO agreements are the main outcomes of negotiations which are negotiated and signed by the big chunk of world's trading nations. These signed documents or contracts give the legal ground regulations for the international commerce. They are essentially contracts binding governments to keep their trading policies within the agreed limits. The contracts which are negotiated and signed by the governments are preliminary based on the objective of helping producers of goods and services, exporters, importers, so that they can conduct their business well. On the same hand, it allows governments to meet their social and environmental objectives. So students, let us now summarize this module. The WTO's working system, which is prevalent, is thus focusing on improving the trade flow internationally as freely as achievable, as long as no undesirable side effects are there. Greater free trade helps in contributing the economic development and well-being. The working style of WTO is quite transparent, where every possibility of creating the confidence of the governments, companies and general public at large is taken care of. Sudden changes in the policies are avoided and policies are framed only after due negotiations and reaching at consensus. The dispute settlement body of WTO aims to solve all the disputes by adapting some neutral procedures which are based upon agreed legal foundations.
थैंक यू